In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install hardwood floor. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. Your channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask you in turn for making this video. So today's gonna to be a lot of fun, so let's get started. Before we get started actually installing the hardwood floor, I wanted to go over some important details about hardwood floor. So what exactly is hardwood flooring? Well, hardwood flooring is just wood planks that are typically tongue and grooved in order to fit together to make the flooring. And something to remember about hardwood floor, it can be refinished in the future. So typically the thicker the hardwood floor, the more refinishing you can do. The flooring that I'm gonna be installing in this video is what's considered pre-finished. As you can see, it's already stained and has a finish on top, but you can also get flooring that is unfinished. So unfinished flooring gives you an option to stain later and finish it later, so that way you can critique exactly what you want. I'm a fan of getting pre-finished, that way you don't have to worry about that step after it's down. And there's common widths that it comes in, typically two and a quarter, three and a quarter, and up to five inches. And there's variety in between this as well, but these are some of the most common widths you can get. And typically the wider the flooring, the faster it goes when it goes to installing. The most common thickness hardwood floor you can get is three quarters inch. And you can also get it in half inch or five sixteenths, but you won't be able to finish it as much if you get it thinner than the three quarter inch. And that's what I'm gonna be installing in this video. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Janka rating of hardwood floor. The Janka rating is also known as the hardness rating. And the higher the number, the harder the wood is. And how it's calculated is they'll take a 0.44 inch steel ball and the amount of pressure it takes to embed it halfway into the wood is the actual Janka rating. So the higher the number, like I said, the harder the wood is. And if we take a look at the common species that you can get the hardwood floor in, the most common is going to be red oak and white oak. That's going to be the very run-of-the-mill typical hardwood floor when you go to purchase it. And that's what this flooring is that I'm going to be installing today. It's oak. And here's the Janka ratings here. And I'm going to put a link in the description below to go check out the website in order to look at all the ratings of this hardwood floor. So next, we need to talk about how to calculate the hardwood floor. When it comes to calculating the hardwood floor to do a room or a whole house, you need to have a waste factor of at least 10%. 10 to 15 is the right range. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to do this. We first need to calculate the area of the whole room. So to calculate the area, we just gotta take the width times the length, and that's gonna give us the square feet of the whole room. So we got 14 times the 16 length, and that gives us 224 square feet is the area of the room. And then if we take the 224 and times it by 0.1, which is 10%, that gives us 22.4. So we just add the 224 plus the 22.4, and that gives us a total of 246.4 square feet to do the room. And then we're just gonna round this up to the next 10th, and that gives us 250 square feet of flooring we need to order to do this whole room. I'm sitting here on boxes of hardwood floor that's been in this room for over 14 days. And the reason why it's been sitting here this long is because I've been way too busy to install it. Just kidding. I had to let the hardwood floor acclimate to the room first before I install it. And what acclimation is, it's when you take the flooring, set it into a room, and give it time to absorb the surrounding humidity and temperature because the humidity and temperature directly impacts the size of the hardwood floor. If it's too humid, it's going to be expanded bigger than what it's going to be after it absorbs the humidity of the room and it's going to shrink, so you definitely don't want to do that. So the best thing to do is let the hardwood floor sit in the room from anywhere from 7 to 14 days, preferably 14 days. And you want to keep the room temperature anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees and you want the relative humidity of the room 35 to 55. Something else you might want to check is the moisture content of your subfloor. I got a moisture meter here and all I'm going to do is turn this on and as you can see I have it set to the wood option and here is going to be the moisture in my wood once I put these prongs into the subfloor, I'm gonna get a reading. So let's check this subfloor here. And when we push this down into the subfloor, it's gonna give us the moisture reading. And as you can see, it's 7.6. We wanna keep our moisture content between six and nine. So that's perfect. And that is in your subfloor. So I'm gonna take that out. And that is a cool little device to have as well. Critical part to installing your hardwood floor is making sure your subfloor is nice and clean. So the first thing I like to do is go through with a putty knife and any drywall mud that's on the floor or glue, 
we scrape that off. And if there's something really tough that won't come up with the putty knife, just take the back end of a Wonder Bar and it'll scrape it right off. So as you can see, that glue came right off the floor using this. A very common problem with subfloor is wherever the joints meet, where the boards come together, they will be raised up from when the house is being built and moisture hitting into those cracks and swelling up. I use Advantech, so as you can see, it limits that problem and I don't have it here, but if you do, be sure to take a belt sander and smooth down if there's any raised edges around the subfloor. After you've scraped the floor clean, it's best to take a shot back and go over the floor one final time. Definitely clean your floor off really well before installing your hardwood floor. Before starting your first row of hardwood floor, there's two different scenarios I wanna to talk to you about. One is if you're just doing one room or if you're doing different rooms and they're all not coming together versus if you're doing a whole house and it's all gonna be hardwood floor. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a whole house, but I'm gonna to explain to you what you're gonna to wanna to do different when starting your first row from a whole house to just a room. So if you take a look down this hallway, as you can see, it's several feet from here to the very back end of that room in which the whole row of hardwood floor is gonna be running. So because of that, we're gonna start out by running a piece of hardwood floor in one whole row straight down from that back room clear to where the camera is setting. So if we take a look across here, we got at least 50 feet of hardwood floor that's gonna be running straight. So you don't wanna start out in one back side of the house and then start out in the other back side of the house and try to get them to come together because you run the risk of them not coming together right and then you're gonna have a wavy looking row. So I'm gonna show you how to address that issue. And if you're gonna be doing just a room, you're gonna to wanna to start in the back side of the room at the farthest wall and work out towards the opening, running perpendicular with your floor joists. Cause you don't wanna run parallel with your floor joists cause it's a weak way of installing your floor. You wanna run perpendicular so it adds strength to your floor. So let's get started. Before I place the hardwood floor on top of the subfloor, I must first install a vapor barrier. And you can also use felt paper that's saturated with asphalt that's commonly used on roofing. But I got the actual underlayment that's meant for hardwood floor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is roll this out and then secure it to the floor using staples. I'm gonna be using this slap stapler to install the underlayment. That's because it's a little quicker and I'm only using quarter inch staples because it doesn't take much to secure this to the subfloor. After it's rolled out, we just come back to where we started and we're gonna slide the paper right up under the lip of this drywall on the end. Now just take the stapler and we're gonna tack it into place. And you don't need a bunch of staples, just a handful to hold it into place until you get your hardwood flooring over it. And whenever you get to the door openings, all we gotta do is slide it over the opening just a little bit to where it needs to be laying flat. And then we just cut it out like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now that the underlayment's down, I gotta take in consideration the longest focal point when you're looking down the run of the hardwood floor. So if we take a look down this row of underlayment, as you can see the tile and then the wall in the hallway is the longest focal point in which you're gonna notice if there's any variation. So I'm gonna use those to chalk my line off of because we wanna keep that running as true as we can. So that's the whole point of starting this row off the way we are now. So let's chalk those lines. In order to calculate how to chalk the line off the tile, if we measure across this hardwood floor, as you can see, we got five and a quarter right to the tongue of this hardwood floor. So that measurement is important. So now what we gotta do, we gotta come down over here to the tile and we're gonna measure over six inches off this face of the tile and make a mark. And the reason why it's six inches that is because we need to allow three quarter inch of an expansion gap from the tile and then right to the tongue of the hardwood floor, that's gonna be right to the edge. So that's gonna be the measurement I want to start off with. And now we're gonna measure up to this mark off the other side of the room and down on the hallway. I'm now gonna measure up off the edge of the tile six inches on this other end. And now the measurement we gotta check here is the distance from this wall to that mark. 
So we take that measurement over. We got three and seven eighths. Now we need to mark three and seven eighths on the end of this hallway wall. I'm now gonna measure three and seven eighths off this edge of the wall. I'm now gonna drive a nail to this first mark that we made earlier. I'm then just going to take a chalk line and hook to that nail. I'm gonna run this chalk line past this mark that we made at the end of the hallway. I'm gonna hand this off to my helper. He's gonna run it down to the wall and I'm gonna tell him why I'm lined up with this mark. So then we'll know we have a straight line from that first mark we made to this mark. A Little bit more, okay, right there. So I'm gonna hold it right there onto that line and snap the chalk line on this side and then this side. All right, so now we got a perfectly straight line starting from the end of that bedroom, clear out to the end of that tile. I'm now gonna take a hammer and nail and place a nail right on that mark that we just held the chalk line on. Now I'm gonna hook my chalk line and run it the other way and extend it past the tile. Come my way just a little bit, right there. And now I'm gonna hold it down that line, snap this side, and then this side's already snapped, but I'm gonna hit it again anyways, okay. So now this line that we got is going straight down the hall to that farthest room. Now it's running clear out past the dining room. Now what I'm gonna do, just to double check that we're running square with the dining room, is we're gonna check from corner to corner up to that chalk line just to make sure. We got 14 foot, 1 8 inch. Now let's check down here. And this is the first mark that we made initially. And we got 14 and 1 8. All right, so we know that string line is running as square as we can off majority of the house, which is very important when doing a whole house. And don't forget to cut out your underlayment wherever your floor vents are. You don't want to install hardwood floor right over them. I'm now going to put down the next row of underlayment. This calls for a four inch overlap. Check with the manufacturer of your underlayment to see what your brand calls for. Something I noticed on camera, this stuff looks really wrinkled. In person, it doesn't look nearly that bad. I think it's a light shining across the floor, so just keep that in mind while you're watching this video. When starting the hardwood floor, I recommend wearing knee pads to save the knees. Now it's time to install the first piece of hardwood flooring, and in order to do so, we need to take the tongue of the hardwood floor and line it up with our chalk line that we chalked, and then we're gonna slide it right up to where it meets the drywall, and as you can see, the drywall is down a little lower than we want it, so we gotta do what's called undercutting the drywall. That's where I'm gonna take my utility knife and just cut enough of the drywall in order to give the hardwood floor an opportunity to expand and contract underneath the drywall if possible. So I'm first just gonna take my utility knife and just cut out some of this drywall. Can freely slide under that drywall if it has to when it's expanding and contracting. So we always want to make sure we leave three quarters of an inch gap between a solid wall and the hardwood floor so again it can expand and contract. Really important to do. We know we need three quarter inch from the plate in the back of this wall so I got to come out about a quarter inch away from the drywall so right about there and now I'm going to slide the board over to the tile and I know I need a three quarter inch gap there as well. So I'm gonna slide this over to give me a three quarter inch gap. So right there. And I need to come about a quarter inch off this wall as well. And now I'm gonna take a speed square and mark each one of those marks I just made. And I know that needs to be cut out in order to get around this wall. So we need to just notch that out. I'm now just gonna take this jigsaw and cut that notch out of the hardwood floor. Now I'm gonna place this into place and see what my cut looks like. And that looks really good. As you can see, we got the three quarter inch gap back here between the tile and the hardwood floor. And then we got just about a quarter inch gap off the drywall. And again, it's three quarters total by the time you figure for the plate that's behind the drywall. So we got three quarters from the plate of the wall. I'm gonna secure the flooring using what's called trim head screws. And these are made by GRK. And I'll put a link to them in the description below, but they work great for fastening hardwood floor. And the very first thing we got to do is pre-drill the flooring in order to drive the screw. The drill bit that I'm using to pre-drill is a 764th. And I'm going to go ahead and place the screw here on the end to hold it into place. 
and you want to make sure you countersink these about a sixteenth. And as you notice, I'm pretty close to the edge here. That's because the T-mold that's going to go over this will cover those right up. I'm now going to come to this end of the board, make sure I'm lined up on that chalk line really well. And this time I'm going to drill on an angle right here on this tongue and place it on this end. And again, you want to countersink those so they're not in the way of the next piece of flooring going in here. I'm now going to place a screw every six to eight inches across this tongue. When I pre-drill for this screw, I want to make sure we're at an angle to where it does not come out the bottom here and get in the way of the flooring. I'm now going to pre-drill the back side of this on the female side of the board so that way this won't pop up after we put our spline in here to continue the run to go this way. So now that flooring is down, it's not going anywhere. So we're going to continue the run and we're going to slide into this tongue. You want to make sure you get some really straight ones for this first row that we're doing. So that way you're not trying to fight it and work all the bows out of it as you go. So this one's really straight. So we're going to line it right up on that line and be sure to get this dust out from pre-drilling before you place your board in here. So that way it doesn't resist it from going all back all the way. So now we're just going to slide the flooring together like so. And as you can see, you want to make sure that it lines up exactly with that chalk line like we did the first piece and it looks really good right there and you obviously need to make sure that you're lined up perfectly straight with each other so as you can see right there we are dead center from center to center here so that's very very important you want to keep your screw about an inch and a half to two inches away from this very end so that way you don't split the tongue so now, same idea, we're just going to put screws every six to eight inches across this tongue and across the back and on the end. I'm going to put these screws in first before I keep pre-drilling this so that way it doesn't shift away from our tight joint. I'm now entering into the hallway with the first row of flooring. If we take a look here, we need to rip this flooring down in order to continue the run. If I take a measurement right up to the drywall, I got about three and seven eighths to where the end of the tongue is going to be. And all we gotta do is take about a quarter inch off, like I said before, to give me a three quarter inch gap from the plate of the wall to the rip. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip several pieces down until I get to the hallway. When it comes to ripping down hardwood flooring, you got a couple options. One, you can take a circular saw with either a guide or put a line on the board where you gotta cut it and then just cut it off like you normally would. Or you can use a table saw. And in order to use the table saw, I'm just gonna set my fence to the three and three quarter inch mark and I'm going to take it and run it right through here to rip it down to size. Either way you want to rip it down, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the perfect cut because it's going to be back behind the baseboard. Now that the flooring's ripped down to size, we're just going to place it together just like we did all the other pieces, except when it comes to anchoring it, we're going to have to do it a little different. So this is a little tight fit here, so I'm going to peck it together. Whenever you use the flooring hammer to butt the pieces together, be sure to use the pointy end where it slides under this tongue so it doesn't damage the hardwood floor. And now when it comes to securing this piece, I'm going to face screw about every six to eight inches across this back to hold it into place. And then I'm going to place some across the tongue just like we did the other pieces. And whenever you put these screws in, be sure to not go out further than a half inch because you want the baseboard to be able to cover up the screws. And don't be afraid if you hit the wall a little bit here at the bottom three inches because base is going to cover it up. First row is now complete and it gives us a perfectly straight row to go off of 
that's consistent with the whole house. The floor nailer that I'm gonna be using to install this hardwood floor is made by Boss Stitch. This is a two-in-one floor nailer, so it can accept staples or cleats. I'm gonna be using the two-inch cleats that's made by Boss Stitch as well. And I'll put a link in the description to the nailer and the cleats so you can pick them up if you need to. And this is going to accept 100 pounds of pressure. We're just gonna hook it into it like this. And now, whenever we take our mallet that it came with, and hit the back end of it, it's gonna drive the nail in much easier than using the manual flooring nailer. So I highly recommend getting a pneumatic nailer. And you can rent these as well if you don't wanna buy one. But honestly, no more than they cost. You don't feel a time restraint if you rent something. So I highly recommend just buying it, to be honest with you. But if you only have a little room to do, you may just wanna rent it. This nailer also came with different base plates, so you can switch them out for different thicknesses of flooring. You can do half inch, five eighths, or three quarter inch floor with this nailer. And this is the mallet that it came with. It's a standard floor mallet that's used for installing the floor. It has a steel end and it has a rubber end, and I'll show you here in a bit on how to use it. Because there was a lot of pre-drill on this first row there's a lot of wood dust so we've got to sweep all that out of the way before we continue the run since we started the row in the middle of the floor like we did we got to install what's called slip tongue or spline either terms fine but what this does it's going to slide right into the hardwood floors groove side and it more or less just creates a tongue so that way you can continue your hardwood floor going this way and that way so if you have a crew of guys you could have two different teams, one going left, one going right. So in this case, it's just one team, so we're going right. In order to install this spline, I'm gonna be using Tide Bond wood glue, and all we gotta do with it first is put a bead right into the groove of this hardwood floor. That's the length of the spline. So we're gonna start here and just put a nice little bit of glue right in there. Doesn't take too much, just enough to hold that spline in there well. And after we put the glue in, I'm gonna take the spline line it right up with that groove and if it fits kind of snug like this one you can just take your mallet and use the steel side and just peck it right into place that's a nice snug fit and as you can see it's created a tongue in order to continue your hardwood floor so now when we install the next piece of flooring it's going to slide in there just as if it was continued off the tongue side of the other side of the board. So now when I go to install the next piece of flooring that's gonna go into the slip tongue, I'm gonna to take the wood glue and place down into the groove of it, so that way it bonds really well to that tongue. And now we're gonna line up right to the edge here, and again, we gotta allow our three quarter inch spacing here from the tile, and we're gonna line it up with this piece, and now we're just going to take our rubber mallet and just tap it into place. Now that we got it tapped into place, we're just going to take our flooring nailer that I showed you earlier and just nail it starting from the edge, just about an inch and a half from the edge. Now I'm just going to hit the end of the flooring nailer with my mallet and come over about six inches and place another nail and just keep running it like that across the whole new piece of flooring. And now we're just going to continue the run of flooring just like we did this first row, except we're going to be securing it using the nailer. It's best practice to wear eye protection and ear protection while using the flooring nailer. In order to reload the nailer, all we got to do is pull the magazine clip up and then place the nails into where the cleat catches the top of this rail. And then we press this little button here and it's going to slide back down and we're ready to continue nailing. I'm now going to show you how to finish up this run and start the next row. So all I got to do here is just measure the distance between the hardwood floor and the tile. And I got 19 and 7 eighths, so I got to subtract 3 quarters of an inch in order to allow for the expansion gap. So I'm going to cut it 19 and 1 eighth in order to finish up this row. When installing hardwood floor, I like to use a miter saw to make all my straight cuts. That's because it's way quicker and more accurate than trying to use a circular saw for the whole job. And remember, when we finish this row, we got to measure off the finished side of our hardwood floor, not the little tongue that's here to connect the pieces. So we're going to measure right off this finished side to the 19 and 1 8 and make a mark. And now we're just going to cut this side of the mark. So this is going to finish up our row. And then we're going to keep this piece 
to start our next row. I'm now going to install this piece to finish up the row. To, in order to finish it up, we're going to put the wood glue in just like we did all the other ones. And now, when we put together the pieces of hardwood floor, this little tongue on the end slides into the pre-existing piece that's already installed. And make sure you keep this joint tight whenever you fit the hardwood floor together like so. So as you can see, we got a tight joint there. And if you ever question it, just tap the other side here to drive it into it using the rubber side, or you can take the metal side as long as you keep the metal flat to the floor when you peck it so that way it doesn't bust the end. This was the other end of the piece we just cut. And now all we gotta do is make sure we're spaced three quarters inch away from this tile and about like so. And now something that's very important with this next run is we do not have to use wood glue anymore. We only use wood glue on this piece that had the spline just to add security. So now we just keep running the floor like normal. And take note of where this piece is gonna break. As you can see, there's no joint within six inches of this break. So if there was a joint right here per se, this piece would be too long and we would have to cut more off this end in order to bring it back past the joint if there was one here. But as you can see, there's no joint on this board for six inches from this edge. Now that I showed you how to do a starter row going straight down the middle of a house to do a whole house, I want to show you how to address just a single bedroom. You first need to get the distance from the edge of your flooring over to the tongue. And in this case, I got five inch exposed and then counting the tongue, it's a quarter. So that's a very critical measurement to know. Now you must go to the back of the room that you got to install the flooring in and find where your floor joists are running and my floor joists are running this way perpendicular with this wall. So I must run the flooring perpendicular with these floor joists. So if my floor joists were running this way, for instance, I would run my floor going this way, but again, the floor joists are running away from the wall. So we wanna run our flooring this way. So we know we need to give a three quarter inch expansion gap off our plate. So we first must come over to this side of the wall and measure up six inches in order to get the distance for a three quarter inch expansion and the tongue of the hardwood floor. And we're gonna pretend that we got a vapor barrier here. I'm not gonna lay the flooring here like I'm telling you, but I'm just showing you how to do it. So I'd measure up off the end of the wall. You don't wanna measure off off the center because if the wall is crooked, you're going to have problems when you're running your flooring. So always go to the end of the wall first. So I'm gonna measure up six inches and make a mark with my pencil. And then I'm going to tack a nail here to hook my string line to. So I take a nail, tack it into that mark. I'm going to go to the other side of the wall. Again, do not go in the middle because you're going to have a crooked line. We want to start from end of the wall and go to the other end of the wall. And for now, I'm going to hook my chalk line to that nail. Now, once I get to the other side of the wall, I'm going to measure up six inches again off the plate of the wall. Again, not off the drywall. And I'm going to mark six inches. And now what I'm going to do is take my chalk line and pull it tight and snap that line right across there. Now this is going to be the chalk line for my starter row. And then come back to where you first made your mark and that's where you would start your row and you would use your chalk line as your guide to line your tongue of your hardwood floor on. And as you can see, we got a nice expansion gap here. Then keep it off against the wall and then use that chalk line to start your flooring. And again, I would show you this, but this house required me to start in the middle of the house. But if you're going to a room, you do this. And also you would secure your board starting out just the same way you secured the first row of flooring that I did earlier. We would put screws right across the tongue part every six inches and then put screws in the back side of here against the wall. And again, make sure you put vapor barrier on the floor first. I was just showing you how to chalk your line to start your row. I want to show you how when I come down here to the hallway and now that I'm running it back here I got a transition into this laundry room now I want to show you a key concept here 
So this piece we got ran up to the door and then we cut around to fit it and this is not nailed in yet. It's just dry fit in. As you can see, there's no nails across here. Then what we did, we held a string line from this tongue over clear across into this room and up to this wall. And then what that's gonna give us is a straight line from the beginning of this row to the wall. If we take a look at the tongue of this temporary row, if we measure 25 inches back, that's five tongues back. And that's gonna be before we gotta rip it down for our starter strip. So now we're gonna do our starter row right off that chalk line. And always keep in mind, if you don't wanna calculate your starter row, you can always just do the spline method like we did on the first row of flooring for this house. So this is just a thing I'm doing because it's not too many runs, so you really don't run the risk of being off too much. Now I'm just gonna remove this row and get started on this starter row. This is the starter row installed and I just secured it using the screws just like we did the starter row at the beginning of the video. The two sections of flooring lined up really well using that method. So you can use that method or the spline method and it can still give you great results using this method but if I had a big run coming up together to meet each other, it's definitely better to use the spline method. As you can see, the screw is going to be covered up by the base for the most part, but there is just a little bit peeking out from the base, so it's very important to cover that up. So what I do to fill in my screw holes is use these filler sticks, and you can get these from Amazon. The link is in the description below. But all we got to do is match up the closest color to the flooring, so it looks like to me, this color here is gonna be the closest. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out of package and see if that fills it in well. In order to use these, all we gotta do is we're gonna just fill in that hole using the crayon like so. So now when you put the baseboard back up, you cannot really see that screw hole at all. So it's really important to test out which screw holes are going to need a little bit of touching up with your crayon before you get too far along here. I call these a crayon, but again, they're technically called filler sticks. And then as you can see, even this one, we need to hit it a little bit as well. And the great thing about these filler sticks is they're good for covering up any kind of scratches in the flooring. So if we take a look, that's going to be much more unnoticeable now that we touch it up with the crayon. Whenever there's spots like this and you don't notice them until after the floor is down, this is a good spot to use the filler stick on. And again, you more or less just rub right over it and then just kind of wipe it off with your hand and it'll help cover it right up. This one, I'm gonna put a little bit of this lighter shade on it as well. So there you go, not perfect, but much better than it was. When you are installing hardwood floor throughout a whole house, eventually you're gonna to have to transition from a hallway and enter into a bedroom. So I wanted to make a detailed clip on how to do so. So that's what I'm about to show you here. So we'll have to notch around this opening to start the next run into the next room. Take a look at this over here. We'll slide it together like that and actually, um, this next piece, I'll tell you what, let's get a longer one for this starter. Just so it goes past this door opening. Let's see how straight it is. Yeah, it's always good to start with a really straight one here. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna get our gaps right and mark the edge of the door. Allow a little bit for expansion there, okay. That looks like we need to take off. All we gotta do is measure this gap here. And that's how much we're gonna to have to rip off, plus a little bit more for expansion. So we'll add about a quarter inch to this gap. We'll take off a half inch. We'll take off about three quarters inch on each side of here when we rip it down. Let's go rip this baby down. If I wanna take three quarters inch off, I'm gonna move my fence over to three quarter. I notice I gotta go a little heavy to get a true three quarter here. I always like to double check the blade to make sure we're sitting where the fence actually shows. So if you take a look around here, it is showing three quarters inch away from the fence to the saw blade. Really important. Now this side, since it's such a little cut, I'll just take that off with the circular saw. Take my speed square, come down three quarters of an inch. And we'll just use it as a scribe line here. Now we'll see how that looks when I cut it out. Probably just use the jigsaw for this. 
Boom. Let's go test it out. Let's see what we got here. Slide it right up to where it's supposed to be. And that looks really good. Good cut right there. We got our expansion joint on the side. Now I like to wear my safety glasses if possible. Grab my little mallet and my nail gun. Take the rubber side of the mallet and hit it into place and that looks good. Then nail it just like we do all the other pieces. Then right along the wall, we'll have to drill it and screw it down just like we did the other pieces. In order to continue into this room, we got to measure up off this wall and then chalk a line from the outside of this tongue cleared down across the room. So we got four and about three eighths. And let's check over here. And we got four, get the camera down here. If you can see that three eighths, we're about four and three eighths here as well. And that's the outside of that tongue. Now we're gonna come down here to this side of the room and measure off the drywall. Four and three eighths. We're gonna put a mark. Then we'll get our chalk line and chalk straight down to that first piece of hardwood flooring. Place our nail on that mark. And that's going to be our helper. All right, then we're going to come straight down through here. Looks like just snap it against the uh, tongue here. So that's our reference line to continue the run. After we got the rows laid out ahead of time, I want to show you how to quickly install it using the nailer. So we just take the rubber side of the hammer, we're going to just pull it down to where we want it, gap it appropriately for expansion, and then we just tap it right into place, first with the rubber side, and then we just nail it every six inches. But I just want to show you the flow of this as I do these few rows. And don't forget to wear your ear protection. So the flow would be just take the rubber side of the mallet, pull the flooring down. I like to take my foot so they line up with each other easy. Then the other foot can help guide it into the other row of wood. Then take your rubber mallet, then take the metal side, tap it tight against the piece we just installed, then nail it off. I would like to show you that this closet in the background will be continued using the slip tongue method like I showed you earlier. I always like to keep a scrap piece of baseboard on hand to check to make sure a row isn't too short as you see me doing here and this was just an eighth inch from being too short but it was fine. A awesome feature to using a pneumatic flooring nailer is right here. As you can see there's not too much room to swing the hammer right in front of the nailer but if you hit the circular part that you usually hit with the mallet straight at it and you're holding firmly with your hand you can actually drive nails still just as demonstrated in this clip so once you get up tight to a wall don't hesitate to try this but i will warn you you run the risk of hitting your drywall and having to repair the drywall later so do this if you feel comfortable doing it. Once you continue running your floor and you can't swing your hammer anymore, you're gonna to have to finish up the last few rows using the screw method. Now, something that I wanna show you before I show you how to finish up these rows is how to cut out around a vent 
Believe it or not, there's vents usually right under windows, so that way the HVAC can heat and cool properly. So with that being said, you almost always got to cut out a vent once you get to these last few rows. So what I got to do here now is I'm going to lay up this board where it's going to go tight next to the board I just installed. And all I got to do now is take my pencil and mark each side of the vent onto the board like so. And this is a 10 by four vent, meaning it's four inches wide and 10 inches long. So that's okay, I really don't need to worry about that because I'm just gonna mark right at the end of the opening here. So after we mark the end of the opening, next thing I gotta do is measure right up to the lip of the metal opening and it gives me four inches. So I know I need to keep four inches on this board when I rip, it, rip off this piece of wood so that way it's gonna finish up to this floor vent. Here are the marks I just made. Now I gotta put my speed square right up to those marks and we know we need to come four inches off this finish side. Now I'm gonna mark four inches here just so I don't lose track of where I need four inches in. I'm just gonna hold up here on the four inch mark and just slide down using the speed square as a guide. And I know I need to finish off and cut this part out. I'm now just gonna take a drill with a 3 8 drill bit and come over to the corner here to where the edge of the drill bit hits each side of the lines. This hole is gonna give me a place to where I can take my jigsaw and place it right in and start cutting down that line I just made. Now I'm going to square out this hole. And now all I got to do is cut down the marks I made earlier. It did splinter just a little bit here, but that's going to be covered up by the floor vent. I'm going to place the piece that we just cut into place. And then I'm just going to take my rubber mallet and place it into the tongue, just like we would any other piece of hardwood floor. And as you can see, it was cut out really nice. And now I'm just going to secure it using the screw method. Now when you get your flooring up to the vent where you gotta cut the next piece, all we gotta do is lay it where it's gonna be installed and then mark the edges and again, if you wanna double check to make sure you're the correct size of the floor vent, you can always measure. And as you can see, we're right at 10 inches. Now all we gotta do, we know we need to come four inches off this edge. So if we hold it right there off the cut we made off this piece, we can mark four inches back like so. That is just the easy way to do it. Or you can just measure the difference here. So if we take a measurement here, we know we got one inch. So we just gotta come three inches back onto this board to give us a four inch cutout for our vent. Now that I got that piece cut, I'm gonna fit it into place and see what we got. And as of right now, it looks good. And now if you have a piece tight against this wall that's hard to get pulled into place, what you can do is wedge against this wall in order to finish it up. Let me show you. An easy way I found to do this is take a piece of old flooring and use it to protect the drywall and then cut a piece down that's slightly bigger than what we need to fill in this gap so that way it'll wedge when we go to place it tight. So as you can see, it's drawing that tight. And if we need to make this joint a little tighter, we can take the Wonder Bar and use it as leverage as well. So as you can see, it drew that piece in nice and tight. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fasten this side. And when I get up tight against this wall, as you can see, the tools are not short enough in order to get an angle to fill in where this tongue is with the screw. So what I like to do, and this isn't quite the same size that we need either. So what I like to do is take a right angle drill in order to pre-drill the tongue and drive the screws. I'm now gonna switch over to my star drive and take one of my screws and drive it into where I just pre-drilled. All right, and made a nice tight joint there. So I'm gonna take all this out and then we're gonna slide down here and do the same to this side. 
And as you can see, we did not damage the drywall doing this, and we're making nice tight joints here. And that's how you finish up around a vent. Now I'm gonna finish up the last row here. I'm here at the last row that's gonna finish up this room, and we just gotta take a measurement that's gonna allow for the board to slide into this tongue and allow for expansion. So if we take a measurement here, we got three and three quarter from the wall to the finished edge. So we just gotta subtract a quarter inch from that in order to allow for expansion. So we gotta rip it down three and a half inches. I just ripped this piece down to size and we're just gonna slide it right in where it belongs. And just so you know, on this last row, we can use our wonder bar and pry against the wall here in order to close up this gap. And sometimes it helps to take your mallet and kind of peck on it as you're prying so it slides into that groove better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and place a screw in this back corner to hold it into place. And now coming out here to squeeze it in tighter. And now we just secure it, putting screws right across this back, similar to how we did our starter row against the wall. Now we just do that same method till we finish the whole row. And that is what the last row is gonna look like when you finish it up right along the wall, a little bit of an expansion gap, and then face screw the ends. I wanted to show you this interesting situation and how we addressed it. Once we got up to this fireplace, we needed just a small strip to slide underneath the stone, but there really was no good way to secure it, and you can easily see up under the stone and notice it wasn't there. So what we did is we got the measurement of the piece that needed to finish up the run by holding it underneath the stone and getting the measurement that way, and then we ripped down the piece and secured it to that piece of hardwood floor before we installed it using glue and screws. Once we made this special piece of flooring, we slid it back into place and used the pry bar to pry it into place and then use screws and face screwed the piece down and it turned out really nice. After all your flooring is installed on the floor and you already tidied up around the walls, there's one last thing we need to do to finish up the job to give it a nice, pristine look. Everywhere we place gaps between tile and the hardwood floor, or if you place gaps between hardwood floor and some other type of flooring, we need to put what's called T-mold or transition strips. And that's what I have here. And as you can see, all we gotta do to install this into this crease, we just place it right in between the tile and the hardwood floor. When we go to install this, what we have to do is cut a 45 degree angle on this and the piece intersecting it, 
line them up, and then we'll just take a finish nailer and just shoot it down about every 12 inches or so. I like to put liquid nails on this, so that way whenever it's nailed down and that glue sets up, it's gonna be extra secure. I'm going to have to install a T-mold right here between the tile and hardwood floor, but first, don't forget, you're gonna have to install your door first then install the T-mold and cut around the jam of the door. If you need to know how to install tile floor, you're in luck. I made a video installing this tile floor that you see here behind me. Check out this video, it'll help you out. 